Hello friends, welcome to our broadcast, Limitless Life. I am Larry Hutton, your host. Glad to have you back with us again today, or if you're here the first time, glad to have you with us today. We're always discussing things in our, uh, in our program uh, that deal with our lives and, and our life living with God, living with the Lord Jesus Christ, because he's got such an abundant life for us. So many people in the world don't know Jesus. So they don't know that there's an abundant life available for them. They don't know God so loved the world that he sent Jesus to die for their sins and their sicknesses and their poverty and their lack and their depression and their fear and all of the curses that come with uh, humanity. I mean, Jesus bore all that so we could live free from it. Uh, so many people don't know that, but that's why we have this program. That's why a lot of other ministers have good programs as well. But we're always trying to minister things that deal with our lives today, things that you can apply, you can go out and put to practice in your life and live a better life. God wants you to live a better life. When Jesus said, I've come that you might have life abundantly, he meant what he said, said what he meant. I'm telling you, God wants us to have a, a wonderful life, a blessed life, a happy life, a joy-filled life, a peaceful life. Yeah, he said we're going to go through the storms of life, but even, even when you go through the storms, he set the example uh, when he was crossing the ocean that time, and he just went, put his uh, head on a pillow and went to sleep during the storm, trying to show us that we should just go through the valley of the shadow of death, fearing no evil, uh, for God is with us. He comforts us. He protects us. He heals us. He delivers us. He prospers us. God does everything for us when we rest in Him. So we've actually been doing a, a long series in, in this particular teaching. Uh, we've, we entitled it God, Money, and Us. So here's God and here's us and here's money. And God's the one that created it all, but He created it for us. And He created it for us to enjoy. He created it for us to have and to be able to be a blessing to others. So money is never supposed to be something that you can't discuss or talk about. It's not supposed to set your heart on it. If you get all mad and uptight at other people because of money, then, then I think money's become a Lord in your life. And so uh, we, we decided to start this series uh, actually... Uh, 11 weeks ago, we're starting our 11th week now. So we've already completed 10 weeks of teaching on God, money, and us. And we've been going scripture after scripture after scripture. Been so enlightening to all of us because God's word is continually revealing more and more to me as well as to you. I mean, I'm sitting here teaching, but then I always pray, uh, God, speak through me even when I'm on the TV program, when I'm speaking to the to the folks watching. You know, and sometimes I'll say things, wasn't part of my notes, wasn't planning on saying it, but uh, it's God. And, and of course, we always know it's God because we go to Scripture and we do more than one Scripture. We don't take an isolated verse of Scripture and build doctrine on that. You can't do that. A lot of people do, but you cannot do that if you're going to be biblically sound. So you always want to have Scripture interpret Scripture. And so we've been doing that. So we've been, uh, we entitled this series, God, Money, and Us. We've been talking about this for some time. But let's go back to where we left off last program. And that's in Philippians chapter 4, Philippians the fourth chapter. And we'll start reading in verses 15 through 19, again, like last program, Philippians 4. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel... When I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. I'm reading from the New King James. For even in Thessalonica, <coughs> excuse me, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we pointed out in last program about verse 19, verse 19, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And we went through, went through some different scriptures showing that 
uh, this isn't saying what some people have preached it to say that that's all God provides is just your needs. Uh, so we went through different scriptures and found out God wants to meet your wants and your desires and he wants to give you more than you even can think. And so we looked up this word need here in the, in the Greek, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. And if you look up that word need, it's actually defined as need, want, use, business, employment, occasion, demand, requirement, all those definitions. And so we saw that last program. Well, then God wants to meet all of my wants according to his riches and glory. He wants to meet all my business according to his riches and glory. He wants to provide and meet all my employment according to his riches and glory. He wants to provide all occasions that arise according to his riches and glory. He, he wants to uh, provide every demand that's placed on me according to his riches and glory. Uh, every requirement that, that arises in my life. He wants to meet that according to his riches and glory. So it goes way beyond just needs. Uh, but for years in religious circles, it's been said that God never promised to meet more than just your needs. And they'd, and they'd always say that needs meant food and clothing and shelter. So God never promised to provide more than what you need. You just, you just can believe God for what you need only. And, you know, whoever says that, whoever makes that statement, you are telling me that God does not care about nor will he provide more than just the things that sustain life? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, I, that's just, uh, un, uh, that just I, I can't comprehend a God that doesn't care about every error of our lives, and we have one, by the way. But, but for people to say, no, 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 just the things that sustain life, that's all God promised to provide. Well, then that means... Um, that means you and I can't have a pet. We can't believe God to provide a pet. Oh, Brother Larry, I got to have my dog or my cat or whatever. Hey, I, 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 I'm touched with the feelings of your infirmities, my friend. I, I have a dog. My wife and I have a Shih Tzu. And I grew up with German Shepherds and Collies and Labs and, and Golden Retrievers. And, and so I love dogs. Uh, and so to think that my God won't provide something that brings me joy and brings me pleasure. Hmm. How about uh, a car? You don't need a car. If God supplies just your needs according to his original, you don't need a car to live. A year from now, if you don't have a car starting today and a year from now, you'd still be alive without a car. So you don't need a car. That won't sustain your life. Oh, Brother Larry, I got to have a car because I got to drive to work. No, you could take a bicycle. <laughs> you could ride a horse like they did in the olden days. <laughs> may take you a lot longer, have to leave a lot, but you'd still be alive. And that's my point. So God provides just our needs. Well, you don't need furniture. Oh, come on, Brother Larry, got to have furniture. Does it? No, you don't need it. You'd still be alive a year from now. You don't need one more, more than one outfit of clothes and one, more than one purse or one pair of shoes. Oh, man, I can see some people go, whoa, you know, you're, you're crazy, Brother Larry. <laughs> you don't need those things. You have one pair of clothes and you may have to wash it a whole lot more to get by and then wear them out quicker and have to go buy another one pair of clothes. But you don't need that to survive to sustain your life. So if God just said that, can you see how ridiculous that thinking is that we don't have a God? Listen, God even says in Matthew, he says, if, if you as a natural parent know how to give good things to your children, how much more? Now you stop and think about giving good things to your kids. What do you give to your kids? Just what they need so that they don't die tomorrow? No. Come on, man, you're always blessed. And if you as a natural parent know how to do that, you have a God that cares even much, much more. He knows how to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. So uh, that, that just blows that theory right out of the water that God just meets our needs and that means just things that sustain life. No, God wants to supply, according to this verse in 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So uh, if you're going to have more than just sustains life when you get to heaven, 
just air to breathe and water to drink and food to eat and, and shelter and clothing, if that's all you're going to provide in heaven? <laughs> no, if you've read about heaven, you know it's a whole lot more. And God said, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But I remember one time when I was reading this verse 19, God supplies all your need according to his riches and glory. I heard the Lord say this to me. <coughs> Excuse me. I heard God say, many of my children don't qualify for this verse to operate in their lives. Well, when he said that to me, whoa, wait a minute. God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory. Well, why wouldn't your children qualify? You said you supply all our need according to his riches and glory. And then he said, but you need to read the context and find out why I said that to them and why they qualified for me to meet all of their needs, want, uses, business uh, requirements, occasions, demands that's placed upon them. Why could I meet all of those things according to my riches and glory? So I, I went back and I read in verse, let's, in fact, let's just do that. Let's start in verse 15 since we re re read that already. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you were the only ones. Hmm. Contemporary English version says this, my friends at Philippi, you remember what it was like when I started preaching the good news in Macedonia? After I left there, you were the only church that became my partner by giving blessings and by receiving them in return. So what I want to zero in on here is not just the aspect that they became partners with Paul. I know some of you that are watching are partners with our ministry. So you help us like they helped Paul get the word of God out. You're helping us get the word of God out. But I want to zero in on something Paul said. He said, he said they shared or they gave or they partnered concerning giving and receiving. Contemporary English, you became my partner by giving blessings and by receiving. So giving and receiving. Scripture also calls it, we've already seen all the scriptures that when we were talking about seed time and harvest, there's giving and receiving. So seed time and harvest. We've looked at other scriptures, sowing and reaping. We'll, we'll continue to look at more as we continue this series. But Paul said they came in contact with what is known as the law of giving and receiving. It's a law. It works. It's something that God set up. In fact, we already studied it out in Mark chapter 4, so we found out it is uh, a law in God's kingdom. Uh, just like when a farmer in the natural realm plants seed, there's a natural law that seed will produce harvest. And so it's a law. A law is something that works. And it works for everyone. It's no respecter of persons, right? Uh, the law of gravity. You drop something, it drops. No matter your age, your education, your skin color, your nationality, rich, poor, doesn't matter. It, the, law, the law works, right? So giving and receiving works. And Paul said it was giving and what? Come on, let me hear you. Giving and what? Receiving. It wasn't just them partnering with and them giving money to Paul, but they were also receiving back in return. And we'll talk about what those are. It wasn't just money, but it, it included money. Just like when a farmer plants a seed, he's going to get a crop. So you're going to get harvest uh, if you learn how to operate this law of giving and receiving. Can't be just giving. I remember years ago, people said, well, you know, when you give, you shouldn't expect anything in return. Well, that wouldn't be very smart. <laughs> what if a farmer went out in the field, planted a whole bunch of seed and did not expect anything? He'd never go back and get the harvest. If he didn't expect anything, he sure wouldn't go get it, would he? So God wants us to come in contact with this law of giving. He wants us to communicate giving, but also communicate receiving. Oh, I like that. All right. So he goes on in the next verse and says, even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again, or time and time again, or over and over again, in other words, unto my necessity. Very interesting. This word necessity is the same Greek word as in the 19th verse, God supplies all my needs. 
This is the same word, uh, which means need, want, uses, uh, business, employment, occasion, demand, requirements. So what this verse is telling us that these partners of Paul's, just like you partner with us, uh, these partners, they were sending over and over, but it wasn't just for Paul to sustain life. That would be need. So, so they sent time and time again. So one time it might have been for, for food or clothing or shelter or to be able to pay for home or shelter or whatever. Another time, something that Paul wanted. It wasn't needed to sustain life, but wanted um, and then uses. And then another time they sent, because uh, he, Paul has to do business. Paul has to live in the world just like you and I live in the world. And we have to deal with bills and government and taxes and y you name it, business. And then employment. Paul, well, Paul's employment. For a while he made tents. That would have been his employment. Other, uh, the rest of the time he was in the ministry full time. So his employment, they provide employment. Uh, occasions that arose in Paul's life. Demands that were placed upon him. Requirements that came along in Paul's life. While he traveled, he was required to do different things. So all of these definitions of this word necessity or the word need, same word in verse 19, uh, they were doing that. They were supplying that. And so this has, remember, this is the context of they came in law with the context of giving and receiving, seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. And so this is part of it is they didn't just do it one time. A farmer doesn't just plant seed one time and get the harvest and live on that harvest the rest of his life. No, he, he keeps planting, keeps planting. But I, I noticed that these folks, uh, these Philippians, um, they were planting into the kingdom of God into good ground. So Paul was good ground. You don't want to just sow your seed on any ground. You want to make sure it's ground that's producing. Paul was always preaching the gospel, always teaching the gospel. So you want to make sure you're sowing into ground that's bringing forth the word. If it's not bringing forth the word, I wouldn't be sowing into that ground except on occasions when God spoke to me. Obviously, giving to the poor, uh, giving to an organization that's feeding the poor, different things like that. Um, when you give to the poor, they, that poor person may not be preaching the gospel, but then the Lord told you to give to them. And sometimes it's to get them born again. Sometimes you find out they're already born again. It's just to help lift them out of that situation. But... Um, over and over again, they gave to Paul's necessity, uh, to all the different reasons that God wanted Paul blessed, just like you and I. So, so this giving and receiving is supposed to work in all of our lives. Then verse 17 says, Paul made this statement, it's not because I desire a gift. I love this statement right here because sometimes people, you know, want to blame preachers when they receive offerings or, or have partners or something. Well, you're just after people's money. No, uh, uh not because I desire a gift. You know what I learned years ago, friend? I've shared this before, but I learned my sowing is what determines my harvest. That's why my wife and I paid off our million dollar Larry Hutton ministry property. We paid off our home. We paid off the cars and everything and, and been debt free for a long time now. Why? Because we've sown into God's kingdom, into men and women, into our pastor, into our local church, and into other men and women that have been partners with their ministry, and harvest came back, and so then we were able to pay off things. And then when you're out of debt, then you can even give more into the gospel, which is fun. But Paul said, not because I desire a gift. Man, that is my heart so much, and I know there's other people that you probably watch as well. You can tell that's their heart. They're, they're, we're here to help you. Paul was here to help them. And then everywhere he went that they partnered to send him, he was going to help them. So he made this statement in verse 17, not because I desire a gift. I'm not, I'm not asking you to partner with me, or I'm not receiving your gifts of love to partner with me because I'm desiring the gift. Mm -mm. Look what he goes on to say. I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Wow. Now, I, I'm not receiving the money because I want it. I'm receiving the money from you because I want you blessed. Wow. 
Listen to a couple other translations. Contemporary English version says, I'm not trying to get something from you, but I want you to receive the blessings that come from giving. Boy, if the world could get a hold of this through Jesus, of course, it doesn't work outside of Jesus. But, when, but if, the, if Christians in this world could get a hold of this, I'm telling you, they could get out of debt, they could become debt free, and they could be much greater uh, givers and blessings. I, I always call myself, I'm a kingdom distributor. <laughs> I distribute. I'm a king to call to be a kingdom distributor. I'm going to help use my money, distribute it to get the kingdom out in other people's lives. Praise God. Uh, God's word to the nations Bible says, it's not that I'm looking for a gift. The opposite is true. I'm looking for your resources to increase. Wow. So he says, fruit that may abound to your account. Now, that's interesting that Paul made that statement. He said, I want fruit to abound to your account. Hmm. So when we understood that years ago, like I said, we got this, we got the understanding. So I'm not looking for you to give me a gift. I'm looking to sow so that God can bring me harvest. And that's why the Lord instructed me to uh, give people a chance to give after I minister the word. When I go places and minister the word of God, um, Always give, he, he said, always give people a chance to give in a love offering after you minister the word. Uh, why? So they can build up their accounts both here on earth and in heaven. Mm, interesting. Your account. That's why Liz and I have been able to go not just to large churches, but we can go to little tiny churches. Went to one church of seven adults one time and, and, and other ones with... 15 and 20 adults, we've been able to go and, and, and when you go to those little churches and they give you the offering and the offering's not enough to pay for your travel expenses, most churches, you know, pay for your airfares and pay for your car rental and things like that, but there are some that don't have the funds to do it. And so when we go there, they give you the offering and the offering sometimes has not been enough to pay for your travel expenses, much less take back and pay employees and, and pay bills and pay living expenses and all that. Um, but that's why we can do it, because we know that when we sow, that then it's going to abound to our accounts. Wow. Both on earth and in heaven. That's pretty cool. God wants fruit both here and in heaven abounding to our account. And you stop and think about that. I mean... You know, God cares about us here on the earth. He wants thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants us living in abundance on the earth. He wants you living in abundance. If you're struggling right now, God wants to change that. It's God's will for you. But he also wants to, and I think maybe sometimes we downplay this, he wants your account in heaven built up. Why? Well, your accounts on earth you live from when you're on the earth. But your accounts in heaven, you're going to live from when you're in heaven. And, and let me ask you this. How long are you going to live in heaven? Huh? How long are you going to live in heaven? And if you compare that time in heaven to the time on earth, you know what the Bible says about our time on earth? A vapor, a vapor of time. Or it compares it to like a flower that comes up today and by the end of the day withers away. <laughs> That's what our life is compared to. Our heavenly life, when we, when we, uh, when Jesus comes and takes us, and man, we live in the new, new heaven and new earth that the Bible talks about. We're going to be, we get our glorified bodies where there's no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. When we get all that, we're going to be living there for eternity. So a thousand years is a lot longer than the hundred years you may live here. 10,000 years, a lot longer than the 100 years you may live here. Uh, a million years, a lot longer than the 120, 30, 40, 50 years you live here. Whatever you live down here, even if you live like Abraham, 175, that is going to be pale in comparison to the amount of time you're going to live in eternity. And God says that the things you give down here cause things to be put in your account up there. Now, I believe that account includes souls. Oh, yeah. He that went to souls is wise. I believe you're going to have people coming up, even those of you that are partners with us, because we're always getting people born again through our ministry. And people are going to come up to you in heaven, going to be part of your account. 
whoo, they're going to come up to you and say, oh man, if it wasn't for your giving to Larry Hutton Ministries, I would have never gotten born again. Wow. So God wants fruit. And you know what? There's going to be rewards. That's part of the, uh, your inheritance in heaven. In, in, that, in that account, there's going to be crowns. The Bible talks about crowns and rewards. You're going to want to have things to make withdrawals from when you're there. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but I'm telling you, God's going to bless you in heaven. He's not going to change. He's not going to stop blessing you when you get to heaven. And so you're going to want accounts both there and here. So uh, Paul says, it's not because I desire a gift. I desire fruit that may abound to your account. And I want my partners to know now, because I know some partners are watching. I want you to know that's my heart for you. I want, and my wife Liz and I want your account to be blessed. We want fruit to abound to your account. First of all here, because this is where you live first. Amen. That's why God said in, in uh, 3 John, I pray above all things that you'd prosper and be in health. He was talking about your life here on earth first. So I want my partners prosperous. I want you blessed. Thank you so much. And we pray for you and speak blessings over you regularly. Thank you for being faithful. If you're not yet a partner and we've been a blessing to you, pray about becoming one because we will be a blessing to you as well. And God's blessings will abound to your account. All right, we're out of time, friends. So we're going to pick this up next program right back here in Philippians. Don't miss it. We're going to be blessed as we go through it. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. In his book, God, the Gold, and the Glory, Larry Hutton delivers a powerful and insightful message which helps tear down some long-standing religious traditions about money and riches that are plainly untrue when seen in the light of the Bible. This book reveals the truth in God's Word concerning godly believers having and using the world's riches, just like Abraham, Joseph, and Jesus used them. You will learn the ways that God prospers His people and see the reasons why God delights so greatly in blessing His people with prosperity. God is glorified when His children prosper and when they have learned what to do with the riches He has given to them. To order God the gold and the glory, go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.